I think I'm a special one. Premier League's most enigmatic personality. Three for me and two for them. Respect, respect. Love him or hate him, you cannot ignore him and you have to respect his record. You go through your CV, Josie. You manage some of the best clubs in world football. Quite frankly, the king of football. He's as big a star as many of the world's great players. He didn't look like a manager. He looked like a film star. I've received awards and I always know why. Because I win football matches. He is one of the most iconic managers in sporting history. I am Jose Mourinho. But the special one wasn't always special because Jose Mourinho had to start from the bottom. In 1992, he took his first big step into coaching, starting off as a translator to the great Bobby Robson. Said who he was, what he was, and that he was to be uh, my interpreter. See, Mourinho retired at the young age of 24, with zero experience playing at the top level. I was not um, a good player, especially in that generation, and was the thing of, if you were not a good player, you cannot be a good manager. Jose knew he had to work even harder if he wanted to make it as a manager. I think the years he spent at Barcelona as a translator, I think he was soaking up knowledge. Working with the best players of, uh, of the world, uh, Stoichkov, uh, Ronaldo, Nazario, Figo. He was uh, intelligent and a student of the game. A very nice person, he recognized my, my contribution to him. After eight years of hard work, Mourinho finally decided it was the right moment to take the leap of faith. In 2002, he found himself back at FC Porto. However, Porto was far from the powerhouse it is today. When you took them over, they were struggling. For Porto to be fifth and uh, struggling to get a UEFA position was, was incredible. The task was grueling for any manager let alone an inexperienced 39-year-old. But it was here that everyone first got a true taste of just how special Mourinho truly was. It was not a shock for me, mm. because I, for three years, I had to deal with these guys, the best, the best in the world every day. So I was, I was lucky. With quality and confidence and working hard to improve the team. And that's and it, that's, all, step was and that's it, is it? That's all there is to it. The yeah. confidence, working hard. Yes, and quality. In his first full season with the club, Mourinho led Porto to the treble by winning the UEFA Cup. And in his second season, Mourinho won an even greater prize, the Champions League. I would never think a guy who hadn't played a game could be a top coach. But then you've got to look at his personality. I think his personality does it. I find that the most amazing thing about him, that he managed to learn that without feeling it as a player. Assistant to Bobby, assistant to Van Gaal, and then he made the decision to step out on his own. And since then, it's proved to be a hell of a decision. But just days after winning the Champions League, Jose was on his way out. On the 2nd of June 2004, Mourinho became the first Portuguese manager in Premier League history as he signed for Chelsea FC. And in his first press conference, he made a bold statement. I'm sorry, I'm a bit arrogant. We have a top manager. I'm a, I think I'm a special one. I, I read a lot of times during this week that I have to prove a lot in English football. Sir Alex is the only one European champion in this country. So I have to prove what? We're still in the press week. I'm the special one. We don't lose games. And I thought, what? I just won the Champions League and you are, you are thinking that I am nobody? 50 difficult questions and can you succeed? And are you ready for this? And are you ready for that? And I was thinking, what is this? So I went a little bit on the aggressive side. So it's can... a bit of an act? Yes, it's a bit of, it's a bit of an act. I'm not special, man. I'm not a special man. <laughs> I was under pressure. But what I, did, I think it did was it told all the players he had the belief that he was going to win the league. Arrogance or not, Mourinho had the players on board. You have to be arrogant on the pitch when your team is the best one. For him, I would, I would give everything. I would, I would leave that pitch you know, in a coffin for him. It was in every, every player that he had felt the exact same way. They needed a personality like like, like mine, in the sense of to tell the guys how good they were. Um, we know exactly what we have to do, and we know how to do it. And I think that's been the main reason we've, we've been so successful. And it also was a message to the club and to the players that he was coming in, that he's coming in with confidence and he's coming in to be a winner. Uh, Chelsea is not the best club in the world. Chelsea won not a premiership for 50 years. We want to win, we want to repeat. He revolutionised. English football. Chelsea are the champions. 50 years on, Jose Mourinho has shown the world that he is indeed the special one.
After going 50 years without a league title, Jose delivered them back-to-back -back Premier Leagues. The fans fell in love with Mourinho, but the same couldn't be said for the Chelsea board. The top stories, goodbye Mourinho. Shock for Chelsea as the club and manager agreed to part ways by mutual consent. It was a bit of disappointment that Jose left when he did. I think there was still work for Jose and all of us to do to, to try and move the club forward a little bit. He come down the dressing room and everyone was crying. Everyone was crying at the dressing room. He come round and he said goodbye one by one by one. Your players were crying yesterday when and you, I when was you crying said that too. And I was crying too. With the footballing world wondering where Jose would go next, they got their answer in June of 2008. Mourinho swapped London for Milan as he signed with Inter on a three year contract, but is that really where he wanted to go? Six months after he left Chelsea, Mourinho held talks about becoming the next manager of Barcelona. Instead, Barcelona would appoint a man fully ingrained in their more than a club tradition. To get the travel in the, in the, in the first time, it's, it's marvellous too. After being rejected by Barcelona, Mourinho took his talents to Inter with the goal of proving them wrong. Whenever he plays against Barcelona, he, he, he probably thinks he has to prove himself. His goals were lofty as they always were, deliver into Milan their first ever treble. And if he could knock out Barca while doing so, it would be even sweeter. Little did he know, he got that chance in 2010. He perceives that, you know, they look down on him. So I'm sure there is an element of wanting to prove his former pay master's wrong. His philosophy is that you may have to play against a team who are better than you, but you have to find a way to win the game. If we need to, let's go to the extreme. But if we need to die on the pitch to go to the final, we are going to do for the team. It's a Milan will go to Madrid. And Jose Mourinho's moment has come again. Barcelona have mocked him. Now they fall to him. Mourinho had achieved his own goal, and after that, he fulfilled the dreams of the club. Inter Milan were treble winners, and it was all thanks to the special one. Mr. Moratti had had that dream since he was a child. And he came along, and he created this team that could go anywhere. Yeah, it was the best moment of my career. Really? I think so. But despite this success, the special one knew he belonged somewhere else. Frustrated at Barcelona's prolonged success, Real Madrid appointed Mourinho with the goal of bringing the giant down. It's clear that Mourinho could have a job closer to his arch rivals. And luckily for Madrid, their hatred for Barcelona was just as high as his. What are your hopes here at Real Madrid? I want to say one day I was Real Madrid coach and during my time we won this and this and this. See, the task of dethroning Pep's super team was going to be one of the hardest tasks of his career. Winning the treble with Inter Milan. Yeah. And he was like the guy that will save Madrid and that will make uh, the team win against us because we were winning everything at the time. Uh, Barcelona the best the best team in the, in the world, Real Madrid trying, trying to change uh, that perspective. But Mourinho was confident because he had a trick up his sleeve. In the press conference every time, he was every day, you know, you know how he is, his style. And, and I think that Guardiola, um, at some point, it, it was too much. I mean, it was more important sometimes what happened out of the pitch than what, what was happening on the pitch. He speaks as he feels, and he makes comments that other managers wouldn't dare to make. It wasn't about football, and he enjoys talking about what's happening on the pitch. And here there was a moment where the press was focusing on what was happening outside of the pitch. The science of destabilizing your opponent is central to just about everything he does. Mourinho's mind games, coupled with bringing the best out of Ronaldo and others, seem to be the difference maker in Mourinho coming out on top. Motivation you don't need to give him, technically you cannot give him. It's just to give tactical adjustments and let the guy happy. It's great to work with him because he's, in the moment he's number one. Not only did Mourinho's men emerge victorious with the La Liga, but they broke the points record in the process, reaching a staggering 100 points. Jose Mourinho has been named the best club coach of 2012. And to top it all off, Pep himself left the club. But how much did that cost the special one? Maybe because of that, on the third season, 
I spoke with the president and I told him, I think it's better for me to go. Mourinho decided that he had unfinished business with Chelsea. And the boss asked me, do you want to come back? And I think in a, in a couple of minutes, decision made. But the Mourinho arriving at Stamford Bridge this time was no longer the special one, so to speak. Who on earth is this? I'm the happy one. A very happy person. I love it. Have a special day. Speak later. Or is it a happy one? Yeah. Yes, you are. I think we are ready to, to marry again and um, to be happy and successful again. Many were skeptical at how this new Mourinho would fare, but it took just two seasons for the happy one to deliver yet another league title. Your third Premier League trophy at Chelsea. How are you feeling? Tired. Are you? <laughs> Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very proud of, of the boys. However, not everyone was happy with this new Mourinho. Mourinho, oh, he's tactical genius, but he's not, he's boring. I think boring is, is 10 years without a title. That's very boring. Chelsea don't play attractive football. Like, does that bother you? It doesn't bother me. It doesn't change me. I want to stay. They know that no other club would, uh, would take me here. It's just up to him. When he wants me to stay, I stay. In the moment he, he thinks it's the right moment for me to leave, I will go somewhere else. Mourinho loved it at Chelsea, but this passion failed to manifest itself in year three. Chelsea was 16th after 16 games. The club had no choice but to make a change. Sources close to manager uh, Jose Mourinho report that he has now been sacked. He gave us more holiday because we were champions. He believed in us more, he trusted us more, and we let him down. This was unfamiliar territory for Mourinho, and the special one we all knew was about to change forever. The English football club Manchester United have agreed a deal with Jose Mourinho to be their new manager. Historical club, legendary club, legendary players. I was very, very happy. Uh, the reality is that I think it's a job that everyone wants. Little did he know, life at Old Trafford would be far from what he'd hoped. It's not easy to come to United and, and transform the, the club's fortunes. I was more about cleaning the house than buying new furniture. And we didn't clean it the way I wanted. Manchester United fired its manager, Jose Mourinho, after a string of terrible results. But it was what happened off the pitch which caught all the attention. He had a good performance, but was his body with my brain, because he was in front of me and I was making every decision for him. He chose that moment to single out Luke Shaw for yet more criticism. It's clear to see that he's not a fan of Luke Shaw as a, as a player. But I think there is concern about how his own sort of state of mind as much as anything else. I mean, this constant criticism has, has worn him down. I mean, it's almost like he's absolving responsibility himself and pointing fingers at the players, and that, that's what it looks like. It looks like a fractious dressing room at the moment. Do you feel sometimes he's ever overstepped the mark with that? I don't think he can change what you are. I think what you are, you are. But Luke Shaw wasn't the only player to catch criticism. Jose Mourinho was reported to say that Pogba was like a virus in the Manchester United dressing room. How will that have gone down? And uh... Once uh, I had a great relationship with, uh, with Mourinho, everybody see that, and the next day you don't know what happened. What do you expect? Do you expect to have the players on side, or do you expect players to sit there and go, hold on a minute, my manager's hammering me in the public again? And I also wonder the effect it's also had in the, the dressing room to the other players, how, the, how they feel about it and whether they are a bit uncomfortable. And that's why you're seeing performances on the, on the field of play that don't have that, that spirit or that energy because there's no spirit or energy within the club, within the squad. His spell at United undoubtedly hurt his reputation, but that didn't stop the special one from returning to the Premier League. The huge news was Maurizio Pochettino was sacked as the Tottenham manager but it's Jose Mourinho, a huge appointment. Mourinho is back in football, he's back in England. Do you think you're now a, a new improved Jose? I think so. Absolutely buzzing with the news, really. Uh, it's been so long now without a trophy. I think it's 11 years and counting, and uh, we, just, we just got a born winner now. It's, uh, it's really bad time. Unfortunately, things continue to go downhill. Tottenham Hotspur have sacked Jose Mourinho. Where does that Mourinho story go next then? I don't see Mourinho back in the Premier League. I do think we've that ship sailed now. I'm... A club that uh, an empty trophy room. Trophy room. <laughs> uh, sex me two days before a final. This was a man who brought trophies to every club he managed. Was it all over for the special one? Maybe it was in England, but in Italy there was still a chance for redemption. Roma. 
have just announced they have a new manager in town and it is uh, the former Tottenham boss, Jose Mourinho. It's been more than a decade now. How do you think you've changed as a coach since you were last coaching in Serie A? I'm much better now. I'm serious. The way people have reacted, um, I think I don't deserve that because I did nothing for them. Um, of course, emotional, of course, pleased, of course, of course, grateful. Of course, um, even more responsibility uh, on my shoulders uh, to try uh, not to let that, that people with that passion uh, down. And the special one did not let them down. Mourinho won Roma their first trophy in 11 years. I had bigger moments than these, but I'm not feeling for myself. I'm feeling for the, for the people, I'm feeling for my players. And uh, this for us is, is our Champions League. But the fairy tale story would end there. Roma failed to win the Europa League in the very next season, and on the 16th of January 2024, Mourinho was sacked once again. He's a dated manager. You know, the way he plays his football, it's on a time gone past. I don't think he adapted well enough, whether it's through his own stubbornness or just simply, look guys, football evolves and leaves everyone behind. It had been clear for a while that performances and results were not really good enough anymore. And I just think Jose Mourinho is just not suited now to this era. And that's why I'm like, listen, either international, or honestly, bro, I, I hate it's to say, he might call it, have to call it a day. Jose, we need to know what is next. If I can work tomorrow, I work tomorrow. I don't enjoy any day without work. I just want to work, but I, I need to be patient. I need to work for the right opportunity. Whether or not Mourinho is able to return to the top, one thing is certain, football is certainly not the same without the special one.